The easiest way to describe what a pad does is that it adjusts the elevation of a site within a defined area. A pad with a retaining edge modifier adds an additional part that allows the terrain to be shaped around the pad, giving you more precise control over cut and fill amounts. You can see here we have an example of a site model with no site modifiers whatsoever. It's simply made up of contours here. We can change that so you can see them. This is only contours. There's nothing else to this site model. This one over here, however, has a pad modifier. So here we have this defined pad, and it's cut down to this particular height. The elevation is set to two feet, so it matches this two foot segment right here. Pads can be used to grade areas for buildings, gazebos, hardscapes, ports, fields, terraced areas, swimming pools, any other application. Pretty much anywhere where you need to create a flat area, they tend to be the most commonly used things when you're doing major cut and fill. To begin, we'll go through a process of creating a simple pad. So first we'll go ahead and delete this one, update the site model, and we'll go back to the regular contours. Now, we'll just go ahead, we'll go ahead and do, delete our duplicate there. We can go to the site planning tool set, and we'll go to site modifiers. We'll go up here to pad mode, and we'll simply create a pad. And first we need to specify an elevation, so we'll do the same thing we had earlier, we'll just do two feet. And then we'll go ahead and we'll draw our pad out here. I'm going to make sure that this one bisects a number of the um, contours so we can see the modification happen. There are a simple square. And of course you'll notice no change will happen until we select the site model and click update. And now this is just simply taking this. We'll go back to a 3D view. This is taking it and sliced our pad at that elevation. You can see that it's perfectly flat at an elevation of two feet. Now, by default, when we went over to the Site Modifier tool, in Preferences, we were modifying the proposed segment of the Site Modifier, the proposed segment of the uh, Site Model. Since this particular Site Model is showing us proposed only, we can see it. If this had been set to existing only, we would not have seen it. We would have seen the little edge here for the Site Modifier, but the change wouldn't have happened. Make sure that when you're adding a site modifier, you have the right 3D display matched with the part that you're actually going to show. The site modifier is specifically set to apply to proposed, not existing. Now, we can look at this in both plan and 3D, and you can, you'll see the contours both ways. They'll show up in 2D and 3D. When you say apply to, this is going to apply to both the 2D and the 3D of the site model itself. You can see the 2D display and the 3D display are set this way. We can set this to expose or existing only. Then if we go to a plan view, you won't see the modification. So again, make sure that matches. It's a very common thing to forget. And sometimes you might have difficulty clicking on the actual site model. Here we can grab it without a problem, but in some complex cases or if you have a lot of overlapping or similar geometry, it might be difficult to select it. You can click and drag from outside the site model and you'll get that there. And that's an easy way to select the site modifier when you only have one of them. Uh, the other method, uh, it's not, again, not necessary here because I can click right on it. But if you have difficulty selecting it, simply right click on an area and choose Select Coincident Objects. It'll give you a choice of the site modifier or the site model. And if you have multiple things stacked here, you can click through these and choose which you want to select. Again, that's not the focus of this video, but worth pointing out. Now, in the Object Info Palette, we can see we can set the settings for the site modifier, this one being a pad. We can adjust the radius, simplification tolerance, configuration, elevation, slope, and what part of the model it applies to, like we saw before. But any changes, but again, any changes we do here will require the site model to be updated before we'll see them. Here, we'll raise this up, and I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter. You'll see the site modifier raise, but the contours haven't adjusted, and that's because we simply haven't updated those yet. There, now you can see it's built sort of a platform here. And do you see this? See where it's sort of added additional contours sticking out a little bit where you might not want those? That's what a retaining edge or a, um, a grade limit would be used to uh, smooth that out later. And we cover that in the grade limits video. I won't cover that right now. What we have here is the same site model, uh, just duplicated, and then I've modified the pad a little bit. I moved it over from the shallow area to the uh, more deeper contoured one here so you can see the difference. This here is a regular pad like we just saw before. You can see it does a similar grading to the edges here. This is a pad with a retaining edge. So you can see it looks like it's just laser cut straight down. It, it ignores all the contours around it and just gouges straight into the landscape. 
This is a pad. This is a pad with retaining edge. So here we can see there's our configuration pad. If we click on this one over here, this is our pad with retaining edge. And that's the difference. It cuts straight down between it. But manipulating this retaining edge takes a little explanation. So I'll go ahead and clear this one away. Clear that away. Focus on this. Let's get in there and focus a little bit. And actually, let's start from scratch. We'll go ahead and delete the existing retaining edge pad, update this, and put it back to normal. Now, we already went over using the site modifier tool itself to create a pad, so we'll go ahead and we'll do a conversion now. So I'll go ahead and I'll just draw a simple rectangle, nothing special about it. Draw that rectangle, then I'll go to Landmark, Create Objects from Shapes, Object Type. We're going to make a site modifier, and the type of site modifier we're going to make, we'll check that in the Show Properties dialog. We're going to choose Pad with Retaining Edge. We're going to have it applied to the proposed. And we'll go over this in a bit, but the slope definition, almost never would you have a perfectly flat pad. Almost every single pad that you're ever going to cut needs a slight slope for drainage of some kind. But we'll, we'll get into that in just a little bit. We'll leave it at the elevation of two feet for now. Click OK. And of course, you'll see again, nothing has happened here. But we also still have that rectangle. So we'll go ahead and delete that. We don't need that anymore. You would keep it if you're going to make a number of site modifiers from that same rectangle, but we are just going to use a retaining edge, so we don't need to worry about that. As we mentioned earlier, there's an additional component to this modifier. Currently, the retaining edge is at the same elevation as the pad itself. We need to adjust those two separately, but we can't just go ahead and grab that object. It still appears as it's one. This is a pad and a retaining edge contained within one site modifier object. So the easiest way to manipulate this, uh, we're going to go to Landmark. And with the, the pad completely over top of the site model, if I had it off to the side, this would not work. And I'm going to choose Send to Surface. And it's going to ask me what I want to send to the surface. I can choose to elevate the retaining edge. This will send each vertex of the retaining edge object embedded in this site modifier object to the elevation of the current site. That's what you saw earlier. Essentially, each point of the object will move to the surface height directly above it, so it'll be perfectly following the surface. Next, you can choose to fit the retaining edge to the surface. This works similarly to elevate option with one big difference. The surface of the site will vary. The retaining edge will conform to the surface. And then as needed, additional vertices will be added to the retaining edge and sent to the current elevation of the surface. This is the more exact fit to the current surface of the existing or proposed site model. And then the last option will move the pad portion of the modifier to the surface directly instead of moving just the retaining edge. This moves the center of the pad to the current elevation of the surface at that point. This is useful when you're working on a slope so you can get the pad matched to the slope first and then use the slope attribute of the pad to align to the slope afterwards. The send to surface command can be used to send the pad to the surface and then a second time to fit the retaining edge to the surface if you wanted to do that. We'll go ahead and we'll update the site model, and we'll see our change. Now, that's not the only way you can control it. See, now that we have this separate, you can see there's a line on the top here in red. That's our retaining edge, and then we have this line at the bottom here. That's the actual pad, so they're separate at the moment. We can control this a number of ways. We can go to the reshape tool, and then we have direct control over these options. I'll hold shift down to move only an X, and if we updated this, It'll do a little extreme. Now, do you see how it stopped? That stopped because it hit the maximum elevation that we talked about earlier when we created the site model. It wouldn't overrun that. So if we edited the site model now, and I went to general, and I went to maximum elevation, I made this, it's called 44 feet. Click OK. Now see, it'll go a little higher, and it'll go to 44. So I must have had it, this must be like 60 or something. But I'll go ahead and undo that now. We don't need to mess with that at the moment. You can move it manually. If you switch over to the reshape tool, you can grab these site modifier bits manually and you can move them separate. Or in the object info palette, you can come down here to the move option. You can move this object around an exact amount. And this is going by coordinates for the document. I can move a single vertex only, or this will actually show the vertex. I'm moving the pad in this case. Or I can switch to the retaining edge. So I'm only moving the retaining edge. You can see as we move between them, it gives different coordinates. And these have a Z height. The pad keeps its height from up here, the actual pad elevation. That doesn't change. 
or I could go by the retaining modifier edges. You can see as I click around here, it'll highlight each of the different edges, and you can move these as well. So reshape tool or this tool, either one works. If you know the exact values, this is easier. If you just want to eyeball it, the reshape tool is easier, so you can just move the different portions around. Drop that one, scotch. Update the site model. There we go, and that's a little more realistic. It slopes down to the side here. And speaking of slope, now we'll cover that. Uh, we'll go ahead and just use this same uh, pad with the retaining edge as the example. Now that we have a good idea of how these two types of modifiers affect a site, you might have noticed that we've all they've all been perfectly flat. Rarely would you ever keep an area on a site perfectly flat. This causes serious drainage problems. For this reason, both the pad and pad with the retaining edge modifiers have a slope option. Uh, it works similarly for both, but we'll just go ahead and use this one. Uh, by default, the slope definition will be none, so it'll be perfectly flat, exactly flat with no slant or slope whatsoever. To give the pad a slope, we just need to choose a slope definition from the object info palette. The slope can be defined by an angle, downward or upward grade by a percentage, and then downward ratio or upward ratio by rise over run. And this option really just controls how the slope is displayed on the modifier. And then the actual slope itself, depending on what you pick, go ahead and choose upward grade, is determined by the slope, elevation at end, or contour angle. This just defines how it's going to be displayed in the labeling. This is where you actually enter the data. In this example, we'll use upward grade percentage and we'll set the slope to simple 1%. You'll see that rise slightly, and we'll update the site model. And there you can see a little bit of contouring in here. So we have a very shallow slope here. And now that we've defined the percentage, we need to set the elevation reference and the slope direction. This is done by adjusting the slope control points in a top plan view. So we'll go ahead and do a plan view now. You can see we now have control handles here because we've enabled the slope. The reference elevation control point is identified by the circle with a crosshair. So you can see that here. This point identifies the spot on the pad that will be the start elevation. This is the actual set elevation of the pad itself. So since we did sloping upward, it's going from this lower area up that way. The dotted line extending to two other control points sets the angle of this contour. Typically, this would be along the edge of the pad, but it can be adjusted. So if I want, I can move it at that angle, and you can watch the definition here. You can see now it slopes that way towards the corner. Go ahead now, though, and put that back where it was, and update the site model again, put it back. And of course, we have the slope direction, which you can see here with this red arrow, we're sloping that way. And this is very simple. You simply move this in the direction you want the slope to go. So currently, it's going uphill, but we could also have it go downward this way, have it move across. This is just a graphical interface for the same situation. So we'll go ahead and update this. And you can see we have direct control over that. We don't have to uh, enter the numeric values. We can just grab this and slope it the way we'd like. For now, I'll point this back uphill, update the site model. There we are. Now, a cross slope can also be enabled, uh, not just a single slope going one direction. So we'll go ahead, we will highlight, and we'll scroll down. And we, we basically, you can do a cross slope just by enabling show slope A and show slope B. Now that we have modifiers actually added to this site, we can now calculate uh, our cut and fill, which is very important and the main reason you're doing this. We'll go ahead and use, uh, now we don't have the site model selected, we have the site modifier selected, and we can see here that none of the area has been calculated yet. We'll click update calculations, and then we get actual values here. Check, make sure our site model doesn't need updating. We'll go ahead and update that, and then we'll go back to a 3D view. And give you a little preview, we can go to 3D display and we can actually show the cut and fill. We've sliced into the site here and we've actually filled it out over here. So this gives you the actual cut and fill. We can go ahead and update that and that'll give us the final calculations for now for the site modeling that we've done so far. And again, that's a 3D display mode. So we can switch this back to proposed and it goes back to using the settings we wanted. Cut and fill uh, overrides, the, um, overrides the 3D style so that it can show you the differences between the two. This part of the site is unaffected, this is cut, and this is filled. And again, in site model settings, you can control those different colors, but we'll go over that again later. 
Now, there's a few things to keep in mind. Just to wrap up, there's a few things to keep in mind when you're creating pad modifiers. First, pads should never overlap. Pads can be placed inside of another pad, but the boundary should not touch or cross. If a pad does intersect another pad, a modifier conflict will occur. This will be displayed with a warning icon on the site and listed in the object info palette. The only time the edge of one pad can touch the edge of another is if the elevation of these two edges is the same. Also, remember some plugin objects like hardscapes can have pad site modifiers, so those still count. Keep that in mind when you're adding more pad modifiers or more hardscapes as a pad modifier. And finally, whenever placing pad modifiers that grade the site, we always want to limit the effect of these modifiers on the site. We don't want a change in one area affecting the grade of the entire site. So you can see here, it's a little bit of a mess that was created that way. This is controlled uh, by using something called a grade limit site modifier, which is a special kind of modifier that sort of adjusts what other site modifiers are doing or adjusts the area that they're allowed to affect the site model within. And we'll be covering that in the next chapter.